What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we've got another live fantasy football mock draft for you back on Yahoo with a 12-team half PPR mock where we will be selecting second overall. Should be pretty interesting. And while we wait for this draft to start, a quick reminder, if you enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us there. Let us hear it in the comment section. You agree, disagree with these picks along with any other questions you guys might have. We'll do our best to answer them all. But with that being said, let's get into it. The draft has just started. I anticipate we will see Christian McCaffrey here being selected first overall. Exactly. Uh, McCaffrey at the 101. Here, I'm going to go with the running back. I believe uh, that Brees Hall and Bijan are right underneath uh, Christian McCaffrey. I will give the slight edge to Brees Hall because, look, at least we know with Brees Hall, if uh, the situation gets really bad, like if Aaron Rodgers gets hurt again or something like that, he can at least put together a really solid season like we saw last year. Uh, whereas, hey, maybe in Bijan's case, uh, with a Ritter type of quarterback, if you don't have that quarterback upgrade, um, he might struggle a little bit more. But either way, again, I've said it before, it's splitting hairs. Uh, one day you might have Brees as your number uh, two guy. Another day it might be Bijan. So uh, I really do think there it's personal preference. Uh, we went with Brees Hall in this scenario. Also, maybe in the later rounds, we want to go with a Kyle Pitts as our tight end. So or Drake London as our wide receiver. So kind of avoiding... Uh, that multi-Atlanta stack from that perspective, um, since we know that Garrett Wilson won't come back to us, uh, and we, you know, we'd have to have Brees and Garrett Wilson, uh, and then you know anyone else on that Jets offense other than Aaron Rodgers, really no thank you. So after our Brees Hall selection, just the rest of these first round picks: C.D. Lamb, Tyreek Hill, Justin Jefferson. Um, this is uh, earlier than I'm expected. Um, expecting to see Justin Jefferson go. I think a lot of that is just kind of the name recognition, but I'd have Amon Ra, Jamar Chase, Garrett Wilson ahead of him. Uh, then run on running backs, Bijan, Jonathan Taylor, Garrett Wilson, A.J. Brown, Jameer Gibbs goes at the end of the first. So we had five running backs go in the first round. I like to see that. Saquon Barkley at the start of the second, going running back heavy this team, then Derrick Henry. You know, I've said before in full PPR scoring, Derrick Henry does scare me a little bit. As it gets obviously closer and closer to standard scoring formats, then it's a different story. Um, but I think I'd still have Kyron Williams ahead of him, uh, potentially Travis Etienne as well. But the other picks in the second round after Derrick Henry, Marvin Harrison Jr., a little too early for me. Puka Nakua drops all the way to the fourth pick in the second. I think that's good value then Kyron Williams. And now we are in the middle point of the second round. Devontae Adams was just drafted. Let's pull up the board here at the next best group of players. We're looking at, you know, some wide receivers here. Uh, Olave, Uke, London, Evans, and then some running backs, Pacheco, Josh Jacobs, Travis Etienne, Let's sort it by position here. Let's sort it by running back. Any must-haves potentially for us. I think we can get a pretty solid running back in the third round. Don't have to wait as long. Um, Pacheco is kind of tempting. Travis Etienne is kind of tempting. There goes Pacheco. I think we can potentially get an Etienne or a Rashad White in the third round. I'm actually pretty confident we can. Um, Josh Jacobs just went. So now it's our turn. And something that we kind of predicted came true, you know, we said Drake London might fall to us, was one of the reasons why we didn't go B. John Robinson. London ranked a little bit lower here on Yahoo. So I, I will go ahead and draft Drake London. I think he is one of the better wide receivers still left in terms of high upside, potential, you know, breakout ability. So I'm going Drake London. And here next, let's see what we're working with. Uh, Brennan Ayuk and Travis Kelsey just got drafted. Okay. Uh, in terms of running backs, probably going to go there. I think the value is better at running back as opposed to wide receiver. Jalen Waddle is there. Pittman is there. Cooper Cup is there. They are tempting, but I want to get a running back because I know there's going to be a running back run. Let's go with Travis Etienne. Um, yeah, let's go with Travis Etienne here. A uh, guy had a top five season last year. Uh, in terms of PPR scoring. So uh, I don't mind that pick. 
yeah, we've got other options were Rashad White, James Cook, even Alvin Kamara. But I mean, there's an outside chance that Alvin Kamara comes back to us. I doubt that happens, but let's see how this thing pans out, right? So uh, the third round was Brennan Ayuk, Travis Etienne, Josh Allen, first quarterback off the board at the start of the third round, third pick. Jalen Waddle, Debo, uh, then Achan for the Dolphins. I've said before that Achan just scares me. Like, look, that uber efficiency that he had last season, that's just impossible to duplicate and maintain year over year. So I'm, I'm not as in on him as most people are, but I will say getting him in the middle of the third round is better value than sometimes what I see with him as a middle second round selection. Then Joe Mixon, then Nico Collins, then Sam Laporta. So now I anticipate we're going to see that run on that group of running backs that we mentioned before, like the Rashad Whites of the world, the Alvin Kamaras, the James Cookses, um, just to name a few of those guys. So I think we're in a good position otherwise, you know, kind of balanced. Drake London, Brees Hall, Travis Etienne. We do need to look at the wide receiver position in the, in this next round. Obviously, I, I, I think that's, you know, goes without saying. I think as far as wide receivers go, we'll probably be in this like range of Diggs, Devonta Smith by the time it's our selection again, right? Because there's going to be some quarterbacks, maybe another tight, uh, actually no, maybe no tight ends, but a quarterback. Uh, so the rest of the picks in the third round after Laporta, DJ Moore, Michael Pittman, Cooper Cup. So yeah, some of those other upper echelon wide receivers that we had mentioned before. I had mentioned Cooper Cup's name. I, you know, he, he was in consideration for that third round pick, uh, as opposed to having gone with Travis Etienne. Um, I just noticed that everyone here has a week 12 buy, but I mean, that doesn't really matter too much. You go best player available, Alvin Kamara. Ooh, I really like how this team is turning out. Team 12, Gibbs, Barkley, Kamara, Cooper Cup. I, I, I have said before that I really, really like the end of the, you know, order in terms of what pick you have, like the last three, four picks. I think it sets you up really, really well uh, to have two top tier guys in the first two rounds. And then the third and the fourth rounds, I think that there's plenty of value picks that fall all the time, like case in point with Cooper Cup and Alvin Kamara. I think Alvin Kamara typically on other platforms might go earlier. But Cooper Cup lasting that long is completely, uh, you know, com- completely normal. So Alvin Kamara goes afterwards, then Terry McLaurin, Rashad White. So, yeah, we started to see that little trend of those next group of running backs. I imagine this guy right here, James Cook, is going to follow suit shortly. Then it's DK Metcalf, Jalen Hurts. And we have got a couple more picks until... It is our selection. There goes James Cook. Exactly right on cue, right? Let's look at the players that we might be considering here. So yeah, this is pretty much playing out exactly how I predicted. We're, if we're going wide receiver, we're at this Mari Cooper, Diggs, Devontae Smith group of guys. Uh, let's see if there's any running backs that I really like that have dropped. Uh, David Montgomery, Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones, was, I'd be the highest on out of the group. Patrick Mahomes just went, uh, Kenneth Walker before that. Yeah. I mean, I think right now we got to go potentially wide receiver, you know, Malik neighbors, not bad. Devonta Smith, Stefan Diggs, Amari Cooper, Ramondre Stevenson going this early. Eh, I don't necessarily love that. Um, I think there's a lot of people in Cleveland. Do you trust Deshaun. It's a tough situation. T. Higgins, number two guy. Malik Neighbors, I, I mean, I do like him. Christian Kirk. Let's go. I, I think Amari Cooper gets disrespected a little bit too much. Let's go with Amari Cooper here as one of our picks. And then we will see what happens in round five. I think we need to add some more wide receivers, honestly. I think it might be T. Higgins here or Devonta Smith, whichever one is left available. Malik Neighbors is also on the short list. And from there on out, we can, you know, uh, I guess tight end can also be an option, right? Like if we go tight end, actually, no, I think, I think we can, we can maybe wait on tight end. 
we can wait for a Kincaid or a Kyle Pitts or an Evan Ingram. Yeah, I, I, I think probably that's the route we're going to go. I want to get some more wide receivers. I'm going with high upside wide receivers. I mean, Smith, Devonta Smith and Tegans are both the number twos on their respective teams. So I'm going to go with T. Higgins. I think that, uh, you know, that's going to be a little bit more of a pass heavy offense for the Cincinnati Bengals, you know, through the air. Who do you trust? Joe Burrow more or Jalen Hurts. But I mean, again, I think it's splitting hairs. Both guys are going to have some inconsistencies, but I do think that T. Higgins can take that next step. So Malik Neighbors immediately afterwards, let's pull up the draft board. I do like that Malik Neighbors pick. Um, he should also have been, you know, in consideration. So yeah, we want T. Higgins. Then that next group of running backs, Montgomery, James Conner, Aaron Jones, and then some uh, tight ends like we predicted. Mark Andrews, there goes Trey McBride. Devonta Smith then, then CJ Stroud, then Dalton Kincaid. So all the next best three available tight ends all went. I'm not really shocked by that. Uh, we said we're going to target guys like, you know, uh, Kyle Pitts or Evan Ingram. <laughs> Funny enough, we already have a Falcon and a Jag on our squad. Maybe instead of Travis Etienne, we should have gone with the Rashad White. So then if, you know, we're kind of forced, I don't want to say forced to, to, to draft Evan Ingram, I think if we get Evan Ingram at the end of the sixth round, that's pretty decent value. Um, we're not so Jaguar stack, Jaguar dependent. Um, but again, if if that second position is a tight end, you could do worse. It's not like it's wide receiver and running back. Now, Tank Dell was just selected with the last pick in the fifth round. Let's see what happens here in the sixth round. I think that you know, looking at all these players, guys that I wouldn't mind on the squad, right? Uh, George Pickens, I don't think he's going to fall to us. Christian Kirk, I wouldn't mind. Um, who else? Who else? Let's look at some of these other wide receivers. Deontay Johnson. I think we can potentially look at running backs. We went wide receiver heavy the last couple of rounds. Zach Moss, um, DeAndre Swift, I think would be a decent value if we get him at the end of the sixth round, honestly. So let's see that situation play out. The last couple of picks have been, let me read them out for you. Kyler Murray, Zay Flowers, Zamir White, Dak Prescott, Christian Kirk, George Kittle. I might actually be forced to take Kyle Pitts or Evan Ingram. Oh no, the person has Travis Kelsey. Never mind. We don't need to take a tight end. We just need to survive three picks here for the tight end position. Yeah, none of these guys have tight end. So as long as these next three picks aren't an Evan Ingram or a Kyle Pitts, I'd be pretty happy. Um, George Pickens is pretty tempting and he just, I, I don't know how I timed that. George Pickens, Raheem Mostert, two more picks. Hoping DeAndre Swift is there. I think that would be a good uh, Hollywood Brown just went. That'd be a good value pick at this point in time, starting running back for the Bears. Um, Zach Moss also isn't bad, but I've already got T. Higgins. And I think he's a little bit overvalued here on Yahoo. So DeAndre Swift would be my target right now. Yeah. Kyle Pitts just went. That is fine. Um, I'm going to go DeAndre Swift to add another running back. Let's go. Now I feel a little bit better. We've got some running back depth. We got Brees. We got Etienne. We've got DeAndre Swift. Najee Harris was just selected. And we are in a good position to draft uh, the last kind of uh, available, what I would say, D, uh, upper-ish echelon tier two tight end, Evan Ingram. So that's what we're going to do here. Let's go Evan Ingram. And again, I know we've got Etienne and Ingram. But I'm not super, super worried about that. Again, it'd be a little bit more worrisome if we had, you know, Travis Etienne and Christian Kirker. Just because the tight end position, you, you take what you can get, right? Uh, and I think with Evan Ingram, he's one of the better uh, producers still left. Because after, you know, maybe a Jake Ferguson also is kind of in that category. But after that group, it's... Man, it's anybody's guess what happens at the tight end position. So, yes, we passed up on a quarterback, whatever. Uh, we'll be fine at quarterback later on. 
I could have gotten, I think Joe Burrow was still there. Let me double check. Yeah, Joe Burrow was still there to pair up with uh, T. Higgins, but I wanted to get my tight end. It's easier to find late round quarterback talents than it is late round tight end talents. So we're probably going to make two more selections and wrap this thing up. I think right now, the way I'm looking in terms of our roster, pretty balanced, right? Drake, Drake London, Amari Cooper. Um, Brees Hall, Travis Etienne, Evan Ingram, T against DeAndre Swift. Like we don't have any major, major weaknesses is what I would point out. I think again, pretty balanced, some decent depth, some, uh, young upside, uh, highish upside players, proven guys like an Amari Cooper. Um, so you know, I, I think this could be a contending squad and the way that it would potentially get elevated is via free agents, uh, free waiver wire moves, excuse me, uh, via, you know, late round uh, good selections and then potentially having one of these guys break out like a Drake London, like a T Higgins, you know, potentially DeAndre Swift, uh, being the guy that the Chicago Bears paid him to be, right? So those are all things that could kind of elevate the squad. I'm pretty surprised that Jordan Love was selected ahead of Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow, by far and away at this point in time, is is the best available quarterback, in my humble opinion. So let's look at the quarterbacks. Joe Burrow, Purdy, Tua, Goff, Jaden Daniels, Caleb Williams, Cousins, Stafford, Herbert, Rodgers, yeah, I've said this before. I'm perfectly fine selecting Aaron Rodgers. And we've gotten to the point where we have got some auto picks. So this is kind of starting to pick up, right? Some defenses. Oh, God. San Francisco, Baltimore. Yeah, don't don't be that guy, right? Um, but the seventh round, just to recap, Justin Tucker. Oh, God, we had a kicker go before this. Justin Tuck, Tucker in the seventh. Evan Ingram, who was our pick. Christian Watson. Rasheed Rice, Zach Moss, Jalen Warren, Jordan Love, Ridley, Godwin, Jake Ferguson, Jaden Reed, Njoku, San Francisco defense, Deontay Johnson, Baltimore defense, Brian Robinson, Tajay Spears, Keenan Allen, New York Jets defense, Roma Dunze, and then who are these two guys going to select? Do they have quarterbacks? They both have quarterbacks. Wow, we're going to get Joe Burrow in the eighth round. That's pretty insane. But, I mean, we got lucky. Does, does everybody have a quarterback? Richardson, Allen, Mahomes. This guy doesn't have so doesn't have a quarterback that just drafted Odunze, Jordan Love, uh, and then the guy picking second to last doesn't have a quarterback either. So they kind of punted on the position. We get lucky. We're gonna go Joe Burrow here. I mean, that's a pretty easy selection for us. So hey, it is what it is. We can also get Jonathan Brooks, who's ranked a little bit too low here. I know he can potentially start on the pup list, but. You don't go Jonathan Brooks. Let me continue to say this. You do not go Jonathan Brooks as your running back because what you're going to get in the first half of the season. You go with Jonathan Brooks, speak of the devil, he just got selected uh, because of what you can get from him at the end of the season, hopefully during, um, you know, during a playoff push. So that's why you go with a Joe Burrow or with a Jonathan Brooks, excuse me. Uh, But we just went uh, Joe Burrow, so we've got our starting roster locked up. There we go. Any must-have wide receivers? I don't mind Lad McConkey here. Let me see if any must-have running backs. But Tony Pollard, Benson, Javante Williams, Gus Edwards. I think at this point in time makes a little bit more sense to get some of, maybe some of these running backs here. Some of these... Gus Edwards, let me queue him up. Wide receiver wise, um, yeah, let's go, let's go, Gus Edwards. So that's kind of the squad, folks, right? Joe Burrow, Drake London, Cooper, Brees, Etienne, Engram, Higgins, Swift, Gus Edwards. Um, we've got the majority of the guys here taken care of. We got some starters on the bench with Swift, with Edwards at an important position, running back. So. I like how it's looking. Next couple of rounds, if we went full uh, draft, we'd focus on the wide receiver position. Uh, And that's kind of how this thing uh, would go. High upside rookies. But hey, let me know your thoughts if you guys enjoyed. 
Hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us there. Uh, if you guys have any questions, let us hear in the comment section. We'll do our best to answer them all. But in the meantime, we'll see you guys in future videos.